Where are my type B watercolor friends? I am definitely type B. Type A just makes me nervous. And if you've been around this channel for a while, you get it. But friends, when you design a watercolor palette like I have that you want others to be just as excited about as you are, you have to finally, once and for all, create a legit watercolor mixing chart. And so today I'm gonna take you on the journey of my watercolor mixing chart. And it was indeed a journey. <laughs> Now, this isn't the first time I've created a chart. I actually did a bunch of these smaller scale way back when I was developing the palette and they seemed to go pretty smoothly and they were incredibly informative in figuring out what colors and what pigments and what formulations and all the things that I wanted to include in this palette. But for some reason, this time around, my brain just revolted and it was a struggle, 100%. But here's the thing. At least once on your watercolor journey, even if you're super duper type B like me, I encourage you to give one of these a try. It's a perfect way to get acquainted with a new palette and really understand the power of the colors in that palette. Because you may think you know what happens when you mix this red with this blue or so on, but until you really do, the custom formulations that might be in your palette are gonna surprise you. And the only way to discover them really is with a color mixing chart. And you're probably like, wait a minute, Christy, what about your loosey goosey, relaxed swatching techniques? Yes, friends, I'm still here for them. I'm actually gonna link a couple below because there's so much to learn from just bumping colors up next to one another. But like I said, going real type A at least once in your journey, see if you like it, see how it feels and I guarantee you're gonna learn something along the way. All right, so like I said, I started small. I had a nine by 12 piece of paper and I started to work out my grid. I'll explain more about that later. And it just was too small. It was like only a half an inch space for each color and I needed more room to move. So how do I build a watercolor mixing chart? Let's say your palette has 12 colors like the Art for Joy's Sake palette does. I'm going to create a grid that is 12 by 12. You figure out the size of your paper, therefore figuring out the size of each square on the grid. I left some space on the left hand side of the grid and the top of the grid because I wanted to list the color names on the left and the top. Now, I am not an expert at explaining this. So friends, if you have a better way of explaining this process, please drop it in the comments. I would appreciate it so much. Let's get that conversation going. And if you just think the chart is pretty like I do, give this video a boop, that's a like. Okay, so back to my process, friends. This was insane. So after I realized that my nine by 12 was way too small, I went big, but I kind of got lazy and I only had 18 by 24 sheets of Strathmore watercolor paper, but I gave it a try and uh, oh my gosh, the quality. I just couldn't handle the weirdness that was happening. And if I was gonna put all this effort into this monster, yep, 18 by 24 color mixing chart, I wanted it to be good. So I pulled out the big guns. You got it. A big old sheet of arches. So let me explain how I did this. And I'm sure I probably took the long hard way because I don't do this often, but bear with me. So the Art for Joy Sake palette has 12 pigments. So I basically created a grid, 12 columns, 12 rows. At the top of the left-hand side column, I started with Fearless, which is the fluorescent yellow, and worked my way down in order, labeling each section. And then the same across the top, starting from the left, going to the right in the same order that I used on the column on the left, I wrote each color name. Now, I wanted my squares to be as big as possible. Ideally, I wanted them to be two by two inches, but that just didn't work on the sheet of watercolor paper that I had, so I had to go two by one and a half. But it kind of looks cool, so it's okay. You're gonna start by painting swatches of each pure color in your palette. And that's just going to happen to be on a diagonal. So find your fearless column and your fearless row. And where they meet up is where you swatch the pure fearless color or whatever pigment it is that you happen to be swatching. That's the fluorescent yellow for me. And now what I do is create a diagonal within that section. Half of it's gonna be mass tone, so full strength, 
full color and the other half is going to be super duper watered down because as you work through this exercise what you begin to realize is that each color intersects twice so each combination intersects twice on this grid so half of my entire mixing color chart will be full color mass tone and the other half will be the same colors the same mixtures but watered down and i'll give you another peek here take a look you can see that that on the diagonal the kind of bottom left triangle of the chart is much brighter and more intense and the top right triangle of the chart is much more muted and that's basically it you're going to continue on for a good long while i mean this chart took me an hour and 15 minutes find your color on the left row then match it up with the color that meets on the top column and mix that 50 50 percent on your palette what do I mean by 50-50? So where Fearless meets up with Calm, I'm gonna mix my best guess of 50% Fearless and 50% Calm. Mix that up real nice and then paint in my square. Gosh, I'm not really good about talking about this technical stuff. I really hope this makes sense. Just in case I've completely confused you, here's a look at the finished chart. And let's just go through this again, just to make sure we're all clear. Find Fearless on the left-hand column and find Fearless on the top row. Where they intersect is where you would paint your first swatch of Fearless. Let's now find the left-hand column of Fierce and then the top row Sweet. So left-hand column of Fierce, top row of Sweet. Yeah, right there. So you're gonna mix Fierce and Sweet together, and that's gonna give you this gorgeous color. But again, whatever palette you're using, maybe you don't use names, maybe you use pigment numbers, maybe you just use one, two, three, four, five, and on and on and on. But I think you get the idea. Now, let's take a look at another little something that was a little hard to explain earlier. So Fearless and Calm, happen right here. Calm, fearless. See that? Calm on the left-hand column meets fearless on the top row. So I'm painting right there my full strength combination of that. But notice fearless and calm happen again. So after I paint the full strength swatch, I'm going to dip my brush in water and paint a very diluted swatch. And that's gonna happen for every single color. So you can see that subtle diagonal that goes across the entire chart. That's because each color has two places to be, one full strength and one muted. I'll be honest, I remember the first time I created one of these charts when I was developing this palette. And I, was blown away at some of the combinations. And I think that's what I love most about this kind of type A watercolor mixing chart is that you're going to discover things you never dreamed. Colors that you thought would just completely be so gross and terrible actually turn out to be splendid and lovely. And it's just a process of discovery, albeit it has some definite bumps in the road. So if you're feeling like you need a reprieve right now, I want you to watch this video next about color bumping. It's gonna give you all of the fun exploratory stuff that the watercolor mixing chart does, but with a more relaxed vibe. And until I see you again, happy painting.